Good morning. Hi. My name is Father Rayapa. I'm a Catholic priest from the Diocese of Vello, South India. Today I'm going to talk about one of the earth systems. Earth systems are divided into four. One is the land, the water, the air, the life. Lithosphere, hydrosphere, atmosphere and biosphere. So this is what I'm going to talk to you today. Biosphere simply means all life on us. In other words, in biblical sense, it is the creation. God created everything. All life on earth came through him, for him, in him. So this is a coexistence. It is an interdependence, interrelated. It is not a vision of to be. It is a vision of interbe, interbe. In the vision of to be means I am alone. I can exist alone without others. No, that is not possible at all. Always our existence is possible in the paradigm of interbe, interbe. And we can never exist without the other. So, I would call it the declaration of dependence. Yeah, everybody talks about the declaration of independence. Every country, they pin their foundation on this axiom. But in creation, that doesn't work. There is no to be. Only interbe, a life of dependence. So we need to write the declaration of dependence in the kingdom of biosphere. That is the ultimate foundation of the constitution of the biosphere. But what we see around us, the biosphere is facing threat from our own species, from our own family. One species is insurgent. One species does no way at all. There is no loss for one species. All the time this species in rebellion, rebellion against other species. So I think only one species is not in a link. He's not in this chain. He has severed his link and he's made himself, I would call it an orphan. Human has become an orphan in God's universe. And by destroying other creatures, we are building orphanage. That is what I would call it. So we are building, we are great builders of orphanages and we are becoming increasingly orphans and orphans and orphans because when other creatures disappear we will be isolated probably we will die of isolation that is what father thomas barry he writes so beautifully he himself calls geologian not theologian geologian father thomas barry is very funny but he is very, very smart and he has written many books. One of the books called The Great Work. In that book he writes, without the soaring birds, without the lakes, without the stars in the night and flowers in the daytime and without the free flowing rivers, we will be impoverished. That is the word he uses. Without our creatures, we will be impoverished. That is true. We will go crazy if you don't have creation, if you don't see the green color of plants, you will go crazy. If you don't see the sunrise and sunset, 
at the beautiful stars and I, the God created this wonderful, beautiful creation for our happiness and our fulfillment. Without them, we will be impoverished. We will be crazy. So I think we need to understand that and biosphere. So this book uh, is in the internet again. All these books are absolutely free of charge and you can google my name Rayapa Kasi or you can google my website www.planetschaser.com P-L-A-N-E-T-S-C-H-A-S-E R dot com again www.planetschaser.com so you can go into the website and download there are almost 13 books so you can download all of them into your computer probably a matter of 10 minutes and you can read it so this book discusses about the fragility of our natural heritage how fragile our life on earth is very, very fragile. They are very delicate. They are very sensitive. Humans are sensitive creatures. So the other creatures, they are. They are also very sensitive. They are fragile. Today in the world, there are so many species of animals and plants facing extinction because of human activity. Only humans they are smart creatures, but uh, so far they didn't bring the smart dimension of their own species. So far, our past maybe 10,000 years is the expression of a, a bad dimension, the evil dimension of human species. So that is the nature's insurgent son, the rebel, the rebellion, the exile. In fact, the Bible we read in the story of Cain and Abel. It is known as the Cain and Abel syndrome. That is what we have. We have got so much of uh, Cain's bloodline. Abel died. Cain killed him all. But most of the DNA uh, comes to humanity from Cain. Cain's bloodline is evil, killing, violence, selfishness, ego lie, manipulation, all these things in the Cain bloodline. So I think the same bloodline comes to us because we are all descendants of Cain because Abel is dead. So naturally our DNA will have lot of traits from Cain bloodline. So it is known as the Cain and Abel bloodline or syndrome. So that is what we are experiencing. So that answers why we are doing things like this. Probably that is the closest theological explanation I can provide to you. We are acting. Why we are so exploited? Why the image of God is known? Man is known as the image of God with such a uh, hubris added to the species. Why he behaves? In the opposite way, exploitive, manipulative, destructive. Why? Maybe Cain and Abel syndrome can answer to this question, I guess. But anyway, we should never stay there, but we can change through, through mutation. Mutation means change in genes. That is what the biological evolution is all about. The evolutionary biology always expressed different kinds of species through the process called mutation. So mutations change in the genes. I think the change is happening right now and uh, the Cain bloodline is going to become history and probably image of God, God's bloodline is going to permeate our genes and we are going to getting better and in fact the divine bloodline 
is explained in the Old Testament and New Testament. For example, Psalm 8 says beautifully, God has created humans little less than an angel. Wow! God has created humans little less than an angel. That is the divine bloodline. I think we have got genes of the divinity. So bring them out and we will be fine and we will really respect biosphere. The fragility of our natural heritage. This is a beautiful wealth God gives. It's a gift. Gift. Trees are gift. Rivers are gift. Oceans are gift. Fish are gift. Everything is a gift. And God found everything was good. And humans are also gift to the biosphere. While you consider only the biosphere is a gift to the humans, the other way is also true. Human being is the gift to the biosphere. Which means we benefit from biosphere and also biosphere benefits from humans. That is the relationship we need to establish. So far, uh, we fail to establish that notion of biosphere really benefiting from the humans. It is called mutualism. You take and you give. And you give and you take. Not like us, no. Take, 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 take. And you never give anything. So that is not right. That is commensalism. That is selfishness in ecology. But here, mutualism. Nature gives you and I give back to nature. I benefit from nature and they benefit from us. So that is called mutualism. Only through mutualism we can really give meaning to our human existence. In fact, in the Old Testament, God gives that uh, uh, role for humans to play. In chapter 2, Genesis, the verse 19 says so beautifully, God brings all the creatures of the biosphere and brings and introduces to humans, hey animals, hey plants, look at your friend, human Adam and Eve. These are your greatest friends and uh, they are your greatest confidante. And uh, you can trust these two guys. Come on, you trust them. They are like me, the image of God. They will love you, protect you, guide you, cherish you, as I do. That is dominion. God's dominion is only about love and justice. But we are misunderstood. Dominion means exploitation, pillaging, controlling, dominating. No, no, no. God's dominion is only love. An extreme form of love and extreme form of justice. You see, God creates and loves, not only loves them, He defends them with justice against hunger, disease, evil, and uh, determining uh, discrimination and exploitation. He is always there to defend His children with justice. So I think humans also should defend other creatures with justice, like what God did. And we should love them, cherish them, and defend them. So that is what the secrets of all uh, existence of human life, and we need to. And God is very open also in chapter Genesis 2, uh, verse 15. He says, till it and keep it. He gives the biosphere to humans, and he says, till it and keep it. In other words, you enjoy creation and conserve it, protect it, don't destroy it. In other words, uh, Genesis 2.15 simply says, it is yours. Every creature is your friend. The Bible says it is a kinship. It is a kinship in love and trust. And uh, I want to say three words uh, to explain Genesis 2.15, till it and keep it. Three words. One is responsibility. Another one is faithfulness. The last one is accountability. These are the three words which mark the role of the human beings. But anyway, here 
There are a lot of things I've written. Actually, this book was written on 2010, the International Year of Biodiversity, United Nations Year, no? United Nations International Year of Biodiversity. So on that occasion, I wrote this book. And there are a lot of things I'm discussing in this book. The very, very interesting subject towards the end. I've written about 10 heroes of biosphere. And I have a friend in Madras University, Dr. Priya Darshana Jain, and she liked that idea. I was encouraged uh, because of her guidance, and she told Father Rayapada, that is very interesting, the 10 heroes of biosphere. That is the concept I developed in Dr. Priya Darshana Jain from Madras University. She is the head of the department of Jainology and she encouraged to write about it and talk about it. So I've been talking ever since and I've written also in this book. Towards the end you can find them, the 10 heroes of biosphere. So read it, enjoy it. There are a lot of other, towards last pages you can find the 10 commandments of biosphere. Yeah, I've written the 10 commandments of biosphere. Actually, I would like to uh, read a little bit about those Ten Commandments. See here, Ten Commandments of Biosphere. Thou shall not put pressure on Biosphere with overpopulation. Remember you have only one Biosphere. Limit your families. Thou shall not exploit Biosphere. I have written, Thou shall not waste paper. Thou shall keep Biosphere holy and friendly. Thou shall honor Biosphere. Thou shall not kill any animal life. Thou shall not commit abuse in Biosphere. Thou shall not steal any trees. Thou shall not harm your neighbors in the Biosphere. Thou shall not covet anything in Biosphere. So these are the Ten Commandments of the Biosphere. So I think we need to bring out that image of God, dimension, which is in all of us and bring it out and I think Biosphere will benefit from our actions and we can benefit from Biosphere and it's interrelated and our life is possible only in relationships especially found in Biosphere. And thank you so much and God bless and have a nice day.